Hello, my name is Sally Pinto, and I'm the program director for the Yonkers NORC Neighborhood Naturally Occurring Retirement Community. We serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We are under the auspices of WJCS and the Yonkers Office for the Aging. We also have a resource specialist and a nurse on staff. We conduct virtual programming when partnership with the Yonkers Public Library on a daily basis. Enjoy the program. To the ocean, which I love particularly, especially being spilled over on a boogie board or something like that, and having my chest all scraped up on the bottom of the ocean. But I don't, I forgive the ocean very well. It's okay. It's okay. I just love it. I just love it watching the sea creatures and everything. So I thought we'd do a little bit of a mixture of both a little sand area, a little under the sea, put a couple of creatures in here, we're kind of celebrating our, our beautiful ocean. Okay. Um, of course, all you need is a few simple uh, tools. You need your pencil, your paper, and a desire to learn. Okay, that's all we need. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a high horizon on this. I think, well, not too high. Maybe, maybe up here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm going to go across. And it doesn't have to be flat perfectly, although it is, when you see usually on the horizon, the ocean, it's, it's pretty flat like this, you know. And that. Uh, and uh, Mike, we had a quick question before we dive in. Do sure, you have, sure. Do you have a finished product that? Um, not, with me, not with me today, but I, I, I uh, generally I will have one. Uh, today I don't have it, unfortunately. I don't have, but I'm gonna. I'll show you. Uh, so I'll go very slow. So these these are pretty simple forms. So hopefully we'll have good luck with that. Okay, so and then uh, one more question before we dive right in. We have a couple of people asking me. So just can you tell us like a little bit about the goal of like, okay, today, you know, here's our paper, we're gonna have this on our paper, like just so that people can sometimes people need a, a little bit of reference to know what's coming up, like not just like the horizon or the Absolutely. water, but what other elements are coming. Right, what we're going to do is undersea elements here. And I, and I did, I think I mentioned this, and we're gonna have kind of offshore elements here with the sand and everything here. So they'll give you a chance to look at both worlds a little bit. Perfect. Thanks, Mike, because we have people joining on the Zoom as yeah. um, as the time progresses. The Zoom has been a little glitchy today, so people have had to update. <laughs> yeah. so, so a couple people missed your intro. So if you just want to, you know, maybe a Excellent. couple times, uh, you know, repeat, that would be great. Excellent. Sure. Yeah, so we'll have a couple of aquatic creatures down here in this area, and then we'll gradually transition into a beach scene, maybe up here, where the kids are looking down and looking down into the ocean, which would be nice. All right. Okay, so let's start here. Uh, let's in the back here, right in the sky area. What we're going to do is let's put some pretty clouds up here. And uh, I make different clouds in different situations look differently. <laughs> I sometimes let them go off. Right into the horizons here, big clouds. Almost looks like a big bushy island there, right? And then there's separate ones. And I used a little shape tool like this, just going around, making little U shapes or half U shapes like this. Little curves. And uh, you see them, depending upon how hot the day is. They all come in, they come in different shapes and stuff. And uh, generally I like to get my clouds a little bit higher and bigger as they come towards the top. Just notice that, that this way they're way above us. You can see the difference clearly, clearly. See? Yeah. So this is the farthest point away. Big cloud on the horizon there, and then here, here, and the biggest one at the top, there, right? And of course, you're practicing in this case, so you can do as many as you want. As many as you want, it's okay. No problem. <clears throat> now, uh, one of the great things about doing art is to show distance on a two-dimensional surface. So we're going to try to do that here. 
um, after we do our clouds and our horizon, let's decide what our first creature will be. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dolphin. The way I start making a dolphin is I'm going to make a circle to determine how large its head should be. Right? This is going to be under the sea now, right? I'm going to pretend that this is under the sea. Right? Over here will be a little bit above the sea. And we'll have the kids playing on the shore, maybe. And we'll have maybe a little umbrella here or something. It'd be kind of nice. Right? And these will be bottle, this will be a bottlenose dolphin. So we'll create a little bottlenose dolphin shape. And uh, simply, it's uh, just having some fun. And Yeah. That shape there. That's a that's a basic shape of a dolphin. That angle. <clears throat> kind of fun. Maybe the dorsal fin will break the surface a little bit too. You know, that'll be nice. And let's do that. And it goes a little bit back and it's a little more rounded than a shark. All right, so. Yeah, and then we'll put the pectoral fins in. I'm pressing very hard so that you can see what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. Maybe this will be one of the aspects of what the children will see to see the fin piercing the surface there, right? Okay. <clears throat> Now, everybody asks me, <clears throat> Mr. Mike, how do I put the eye on, on the dolphin? Well, I always, bottlenose dolphins always look like they're smiling to me. So a smiling dolphin is cool because the end of the smile is where the eye is. And what I do is I come back here, I create a little smile right here. This is where the eye will be. See the eye? Uh, like that. Many years ago, <clears throat> when we went down to Florida, we actually had a chance to ride on them. <clears throat> Sorry, my, my, I have allergies. My, my voice is a little off. Um, and uh, I think what, what impressed me most is the power of them, just sheer power of them. He dragged us through the water like it was to nothing. You know, <clears throat> you hold on. <clears throat> right. All right. So we have our, and then of course I do a little cleanup. I erase some of the lines that I don't need here. Like this, and this. Okay. Well, they basically have one sea object done right? under the sea. <clears throat> I'll pretend right? this is going to be where the water comes up right up to the sand here, right? This is what we're going to do. See there? Looks like a pancake, right? A little bit of a pancake almost. Beautiful. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, not too hard. Uh, let's give it another friend down here. Let's give a tortoise. They're kind of fun too, right? They're very old. What we do is we're going to have a swimming. This will be the beginning of it. <clears throat> see, they're all they're all pointed out towards sea. They don't want to get too close to the land because they're a little afraid. So they just they came in to visit, say hello, and they just leave for a little while. Okay. <clears throat> Of 
course, they have these wonderful designs, part of the armature of their backs here, um, that protects them. Not from all enemies, but quite a few. And give them a little smile too, why not? They have a see how they're swimming away there. Swimming away. When I was a little boy, I really didn't like the ocean much. I was a little scared of it. I think uh, I was frightened because of the, the, the mysteriousness of it. And um, and then you start reading about all the things that are great on the ocean. And my fear kind of subsided after that. It made it a little easier. Okay. Now we have to have some human inhabitants here, so we can they can appreciate what we have here, right? That's, that's the really important thing. You know, people can take care of them and observe them. Just swimming along. And uh, I think back here, so everybody can see the difference, is I'm going to put a pole, a pole, a pole here. But we'll be putting ripples in the water too, so that you can see the difference between the land and the, the water. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put in each umbrella. Each umbrella? Yeah. When I was in college, I, uh, I went on what's called a pelagic trip out in Long Island Sound. And it was really a, a trip, largely educational on my part and partly for my, my college credits. But uh, basically we were there to, to look at the pelagic life, the seabirds and the, any kind of whales or anything. So we, so we, got, our, we got a tree. Um, we didn't see anything going out, but when we turned around, come back, this giant humpback whale just came right up out of the water near us. It gave us such a treat. It was so wonderful. Now I'm going to do a little trick here on the umbrella to give it a 3D look, all right? This is just a 2D look. See, it's got height and it's got width, all right? Height and width, all right? So let's give it some depth. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to add another little... See, I doubled up on it. See, see, I doubled up on that. See, doubled up on it. See? Now you can look inside it. See, you can look inside. <clears throat> That'll add a lot of value to your drawings when you do beach scenes. You do them in that angle. And you don't have to do all of them in that angle, only when it's a necessity. And then all I have to do is erase the pole that goes in the middle. And there you have it. See? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not thinking straight. There we are. Erase the pole on the top. <laughs> there you go. Erase the pole on the top. Bring this out a little better. Bring the pole more center. Yeah, that's better. There you go. Now you think it right. Now you think it. Okay. This is what I go through when I do any sketches for, no matter what, whether it's my own private drawing or my own commission, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then I'm going to do a couple of little designs here, little curvy lines meeting with the points to show contour lines. See contour lines? 
it shows you how the top of the umbrella bends. See how it bends. You never want to bring these straight down because then it'll look like a piece of wood that has white stripes right now. This looks like it's part of the umbrella and the seams are actually curved. They go to each point. Yeah. And that gives you a, definitely your impression of more of a lifelike look to your drawing. And so we know that the sun is out. I'll make sure I put before time gets away from us. And umbrella, you need a little bit of sun. Okay, a little bit of sun release. Yeah. Very lightly. I use a very light touch when I shadow. Very light touch. See what I did? Again, that does add also the 3D quality to it a little bit. Are so good, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out the size of the head of a child. Notice how far it is above the horizon. When we, we actually build a human being, we think of the head size first, all right? And then we use that head size as to measure the human body and see how big they would, whether it'll be an adult or a child. An adult can be around six heads high, and a children can be like four, three to four heads high, all right? So you do one, two, three, you'll notice that's about where the feet of this child will go, right there. Okay? You gotta fill in that body to that point, right? And what, what we do is to make the child look like a child, we try to, make the head a look a little bigger than the rest of the body. All right, so we're gonna do is this, watch. I'm gonna add simple. That's the trunk of the body, right? The trunk. That's from your neck, roughly, your collarbone to where your belt would be on your pants, on your slacks, your pants, right? About where your belt would be. So that's roughly there. It can be, we, you know, we can change it a little bit. We can change it a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to take off the bottom part of the rectangle. And I'm going to make it look like he's, uh, he's crouching a little bit. And making it a pair of like bathing trunks. The bathing trunks. Otherwise, it would look like short legs, right? <clears throat> look at short legs again. And we'll try to we'll make it look like he's trying to throw like um some food or something into the water that, the, that, that they would like maybe to come closer. Now building, building people is very easy as we're building anything. Uh, I follow um, a formula, a circle, a square, a triangle, and a cylinder. And with those four shapes, you can make almost anything on the planet. Uh, so bend the shapes a little bit, change them, and you, you do just well, very well. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to just like that, bend the child back. And, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna extend the arm so that it looks like he's gonna add, gonna throw something into the water. Just like that. 
And I'm bringing this up close so you can see it. Take your time doing this. All right. See how the boy's knees are bent? They're bent. Now, they don't have to be bent. You can have them standing straight up also. It just gives a little more animation look to the scene, whereas he's, he's bent. Right? So far, so good. All right. Not time now. And let's put a little hair on. Now, this, of course, gender is up to you. Be a girl or boy, doesn't matter. You can have a friend with a big smiley face. And then what I do is I take my eraser and I kind of tidy up inside a little bit to make it look a little bit more uh, of the body shape rather than more like robotic. Okay. And maybe maybe she threw something in the water like this. Yeah. Now remember, everything about the rising above the earth is going to cast a shadow, right? Depending upon where your sun is. Now, we'll, for the sake of uh, argument, we'll have the sun pretty much straight up in the sky. So what I did is I put a little shadow under her body, and I looked like she threw some some sort of objects into the water. Definitely food. We want to make sure. Okay. A crossover arm is very important too. Gives the body a 3D look also. And the arm crosses over the front of the body like that. A little more fun. And now this may seem simple to you, but take a look at this. Look at the umbrella, look at the ground, look where she is. Now look at the blanket laying on the, on the ground. Look at the blanket. Notice the blanket is not a perfect rectangle nor a perfect square. It's got the side farthest away from us is smaller in size than the part facing us. Yes. That's to show distance, see? If you just went in there and did a rectangle, it would look like a piece of wood that was stuck in the sand and it wouldn't look very good. So you try to do it as, put as dimensionally as possible as good as you can. Yeah, right there. Now, if you can always add things to this as we go. We're going to add some more objects to this, so that's a good thing. Um, maybe she has an adult with her. Now we can see the difference. And I'll show you how to do that.
maybe he or dad or the older brother is standing there. And remember the triangle, circle triangle, cylinder, all that, what we use as far as making shapes for the human body. The cylinder is the most common shape. We use it for the neck, the arms, the legs, everything, right? And here's another person there, the old enjoying the festivities, right? Right there. This point of view is nice because it really gives you a chance to see both worlds. You see humans enjoying the ocean world, and maybe some inhabitants of the ocean world enjoying humans. Um, so we'll, let's review. So we have the oval of the head, rectangle for the upper body, cylinder for the leg, cylinder for the leg, cylinder for the arm. Notice the arms come down right about where the belt would be. Lovely. Uh, I set this triangle for the, for the foot a little bit. Kind of. And we use circles for the hands is what we put the fingers on. And of course the fingers are depending upon how far away you are. If you're far away, you may not see all the details. So you are gonna, gonna guess that a little bit. So, Try to put somewhere always on your paper when you're drawing to remind you. Circle, square, triangle, cylinder, very small images down the bottom. So to rem always remind yourself of what I talked about. And this is a format that they use in art schools everywhere, really. Um, you can use those shapes to create just about anything. And some things are, some things are easy. Like somebody says to you, what form would you use for a door? Well, a rectangle, you know, that's easy. But some are not so easy. And those we have to combine two or three of them together to get the desired result. And then you have to do a lot of erasing. You know? But with practice, you can do really well. In practice, you do really well with that. Okay. Uh, let's do uh, put our dad with her. And maybe he's wearing sunglasses. Smile. Now, what you do is uh, remember the distance does hide details. So you got to remember that when you put this thing in, you're not going to be able to do a nose with all the details as if it was up close. This is where I just make I make small corrections. See, it's small corrections. Actually, it could be her older brother, too. He's a, he doesn't look that much more adult than she does, really. And um, again, the corresponding shadow. Eight. Very important. Yeah. It's a very simple rendition. See how, how easy it is for us to do these things. Again, using the method system, all the methods, circle, square, triangle, cylinder, all this. The dolphin would be just made up of a series of circles. Circle, 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 all the way out. Maybe two circles for the tortoise.
So what I'd like to do is go ahead, jump ahead just a little bit. Does everybody have a color pencil, a blue color pencil? I hope you do. Because what I'd like to do is I want to put a little bit of color into the water right where the top of the ocean is on them and just put little lines going across to show the difference between this and the sandy area of the children and uh, on the beach, all right? But the one thing that has to be important to remember is that these lines should be fairly straight across, right? You don't want them zigzag because it really distracts water lays flat. So any rippling of the water or any reflection of light will come in a horizontal way, right? Unless you have energy behind it, like a wave, where a wave can distort it, okay? But here it's just a very nice, calm area. So what I'm using here is just a straight blue, Crayola, Crayola pencil, okay? Straight blue pencil. And what I want to do is I want to locate approximately where the thin cuts the surface. You see that little line I did right under the surface, under the pectoral fin, uh, uh, the dorsal fin, <coughs> right there. I won't do the dorsal fin. I'll just keep that above the water there, right? See, the water. But I'm not going to cover all the white because that would be that would be a little time consuming. What I do is just tilt this a little bit because my angle is off here a little bit, and. Put little lines together. <coughs> Do you see that, boys and girls? Now, bottlenose dolphins generally are, are gray. So you'll still be able to put the gray in if you want to, because I'm not going to try to dominate the blue on there too much. Just enough so that people get a little bit of the reflected light from the, from the sky. All right. And that I'll do this like this. I'll do this. Take my pencil and I'm going to go, you notice I'm going to go in it. An angle this time. I'm going at a 45 degree angle. It also speeds up the process. Notice I don't cover my clouds either, right? See my clouds open. Now, to you, it may look a little grayish, but it's blue. It's really a blue color. I don't know why it doesn't come across better, but it's it's a blue. It's a nice blue color there. See, so what I'm going to do is. Put scattered lines you know, along the top to show that there's some water underneath, all right? Reflected. I'm going to have the turtle under the water. So I'll put some blue right on top of them completely. I was going to try to put a wave in this, but I thought it would be a little too much based on the time frame that we had. So I figured I'd better just leave it with no wave. But you could try this with a wave, actually. Uh, put a nice big wave in there. I think we've done waves in the past. If you've been with me, you can refer to the, that one. Or two. Right. Simple way of trying to get the horizon in there, too. I want the horizon to look different than the white cloud. So I got to put blue underneath in the water there, too. So. Now that's a little time consuming. So I'll let you have that to yourself mostly because it'll take more time and it's 
just a, a simply repetitive act. What I thought we could do is we do a couple more um, characters, maybe. Uh, let's see. Um, put a fish in here, too. A fish, a size fish would be good. Let's do a. Um, well, you get, by the way, you have fun with the reds and stuff with the, with the umbrella. You have a lot of fun with those. That, that, those are always cool. Um, all right, so let's do this. Let's do, um, let's go the other way. We're going to do, let's do the other way. I'm going to put a fish in here. And I'm going to start with, decide how big the fish is going to be. Remember, and there I go back to the old reliable circle again. All right, old reliable circle. And I'm going to put big eye uh, there. Some of these fish that are very large, people catch these things. There's amazing power they have. Um, I have an uncle that lives down in Florida. He, he, he fished for years down there. And he uh, used to tell me stories about it. You used to take the pole right out of your hands. It's so strong. Is a good start right here for fish. I have them all smiling. Why not have a happy time, right? Give them a happy time. Back here. Let's push it. Come on. <laughs> He's cute. He's cute. Pushing away. Caribbean has some beautiful fish too. They uh here's the bottom of the ocean right here, right? The bottom. It's pretty shallow still, right? The bottom. And what you do is um we could create, let me show you a shape for a, oh, okay, seahorse, seahorse, seahorses are good, they're very cool. The basic, basic shape for a seahorse is uh, the sea curly tail. Yeah. You gotta have him going the other way there. He's, he's going, we'll, we'll put some crab in here too and stuff like that.
we were saying. The way it's brought us in. The sea worse. Now, since this is a shallow body of water, each of these characters is going to cast a small, a small shadow on the bottom. So, and the shadow does what it does is it puts it in contact with how far that the land away is. So we know that it's it's swimming, not standing anywhere, actually swimming on the bottom. Like uh, SpongeBob's uh, the uh, bikini atoll, the only they're only like 15 feet in deep water. That's about it, and uh, but you can still see the sun filtering through all the time. Now, this is always clean up when you need to go back and adjust things from your actual original sketch. Bring this text in. So, and the Put a crab. Some crab down there at the bottom. You see the little crab at the bottom? He's got his pincers. Oh, let's see. I gave him one claw. So, now let me see if I get a little bit of a, a bright, a bright color for our sand. A little sand color, yellow. Or even a raw sienna. Raw sienna is nice too. It's a yellowish brown color. And uh, with that with yellow, Makes a nice sand color. You see, in these big spots, I really don't spend a lot of time. I gotta push my pencil sideways and just covering that area. 
Now, we have a lot of time, of course, this week, especially the school is school is winding down a little bit. So you won't have that much homework and stuff for in the case maybe you may not have any school anymore. Um, you'll have time to do this. You can do a variation of this would be wonderful. Um, I think uh, having different types of animals in it or uh, it would be wonderful. Um, I think um, different people also. You have a whole family. So the yellow brings out a little warmth. Yeah. Of course, the warmth on this on the umbrella. Oh boy. And we'll pick a red too, like a little, an orangey or red color for the for the canopy of the umbrella. Do this. Of course, I want to bring up. I always want to bring up my uh, my blue right to the shore. Remember, these should be nice and horizontal. It seems like a lot of work when you're doing this, but if you're actually doing something else at the time, like watching television, or it goes by very quickly. Uh, these are the big areas I used to save for last because I wanted to make sure that. Uh, Wanted my interest to be there, but I'm not too last. Uh, <laughs> but it's this is just a large area here. Of course, you could spend time with the actual creatures on there too. Now, whatever colors you use for the sand above the water, you can use the sand colors down here, and that relates the two of them together. All right, because that that's what they would be. They would actually be relatable that way. I'll take my sienna and go under. Oops. That's in there. Maybe a few uh, little water balloon, um, bubbles. Right? Yeah, raw sienna is very good with yellow to make that warm sand color. So if you do this in watercolor pencil, then you can use actually use water to liquefy the colors together and it really stands out. But color pencil just works too, just as well. Nice. I don't know if you have a gray pencil for our dolphin. Okay. We don't really use grays a lot, but I don't know if you find one here somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, 
It's a gray, but it's more like a pencil drawing gray. Kind of graphite. A little, little graphite in there, see, it would make it look like you're and of course, I know sea tortoises can get very old. Uh, I know the ones we call up this island, uh, in South America, they, 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 I forget whether it's more or a couple of hundred years old, we're near that, uh, amazing. I mean, the stories, if they could speak, I mean, the stories they could tell. Uh, how cute. How cute, too. You know, make sure that shadow is nice and good there because we're we'll making it look like they're off the ground at the bottom of the ocean, right? You know, just uh, kind of swimming by. A little, a little bit of a oceanic world here, right? Yeah. How much fun.
puts the uh, sea lice is a brilliant orange, so they're really attractive. You want to keep that dorsal fin a little bit light. I'll tell you, let's, uh, it's about time. Let's do a little, a little signature here. I always like to put my signature somewhere along the bottom. And Everybody has their own way. And there you have it. There you have it. I'll keep you busy on another day, just doing variations of it. Hi, everyone. This is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well. <laughs>